Yes, sir. Yeah. Can we start? Yes, sir. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, good morning, students. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, preterm. So, what's the definition about preterm? I want everyone to switch on their videos. I'll be asking your questions. It'll be interactive sessions. So, kindly switch on your videos. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. We are all turning cameras on. Yeah, yeah. I want everyone to switch on the videos. It's okay, fine. Uh, the WHO has defined the preterm as babies born alive before. 37 weeks of pregnancy completed. It has been divided into three subcategories based on the gestational age. They are extremely preterm uh, when they are born uh, less than 28 weeks of gestation, very preterm when they are born between 28 and uh, 32 weeks of uh, gestation, moderate to late preterm 32 to 37 weeks of gestation. So, what are the cause, uh, common causes of uh, preterm labor? 45% uh, of the preterm labor occurs spontaneously. The mechanism for preterm labor is not yet clearly uh, identified now, till now. 25% of the preterm labor occurs because of the premature uh, rupture of the membrane, and 30% because of the maternal and fetal inf infections. So, what are the probable mechanisms of uh, spontaneous uh, preterm labors? The progesterone is the central uh, plays a central role in maintaining the uh, pregnancy, as you know. Once the progesterone is withdrawn, the preterm the labor pro, uh, mechanism gets started. Another the hypothesis is this: uh, the uh, progesterone uh, reduces the uh, inflammatory markers, uh, reduces the immunity. Though why? Because the fetus is in a, a semi allograft where the uh, immune system tries to reject the uh, fetus. The progesterone keeps a hold on this uh, semi allograft uh, rejection. So these are the two mechanisms which helps in maintaining the pregnancies. So once the progesterone action is declined, we can expect a labor. Cervical diseases like uh, short cervix, inflammations can cause the preterm labor. A breakdown of the maternal fetal tolerance that is yet again maintained by the progesterone maternal stress, unknown causes, infections. The infections, how it causes uh, preterm labor means whenever there is an infection, there is an inflammatory markers will be uh, produced in the body, uh, namely prostaglandins, which causes the uterine contractions and causes the preterm labor. And some vascular disorders in the placenta and the uterus and deciduous senescence in the uterus can cause a, a preterm labor and multiple pregnancies, uh, multipara, uh, twins, uh, uh, triplets, uh, quadruplets, all this cause the uterine distension, which again gives a, st uh, st a stimulus for the uterine contraction. So these are the probable uh, uh, causes for the spontaneous preterm labor. Okay, once the baby is born, let us see how the, uh, how to manage these preterm babies. Uh, uh, pediatrician should be present whenever there is an expected uh, preterm delivery occurs. Uh, the baby should be received in the uh, delivery room and the resuscitation and starts right from the uh, delivery of the head. So good, ensure good thermoregulations, 
gentle ventilation as required, avoiding hyperventilation and hyperoxia. Administer surfactant. The surfactant is in the phospholipid, which helps in maintaining the alveoli from collapsing. So uh, surfactant has to be given either prophylactically, less than 28 weeks, irrespective of uh, the uh, baby's condition, we will be giving a prophylaxis, uh, the surfactant that is called a prophylactic approach. More than 28 weeks, depending upon the clinical conditions of the baby, we decide whether to give a surfactant or we can wait and watch, we can manage the baby with, uh, simply with the uh, positive pressure ventilation and all. So that is called prophylaxic and therapeutic surfactant administrations. So once this resuscitation is uh, uh, done, the baby has to be admitted in NIC. The baby's less than 34 weeks of gestation and less than 1.8 kg has to be admitted in the NICU and monitored for the following parameters. So weight has to be measured daily. Why? Because there will be a uh, weight loss in the initial one week because of a diuresis. Uh, so that you expect a weight loss in the babies. There is an expected weight loss, uh, say oh, oh, 3% per day of the total body weight will be losing in the initial few days. So when the dehydration goes beyond this expected percentage, the baby will be having a lot of complications. Administer surfactant within first hour. If a rescue occurs, the baby is having a respiratory distress, a saturation is dropping, baby having a tachypnea, tachycardia, all those things, then we have to give a surfactant that is called rescue therapy. Establishing a good vascular access and the peripheral uh, IV line or an umbilical catheter or an umbilical venous catheter. Uh, start administration of the IV fluid as soon as possible with the dextrose and the amino acid solutions. Uh, limit the evaporative water loss uh, using a humidified incubator. The baby can be wrapped in a plastic wrapper, though thereby preventing the uh, evaporative water loss and preventing the dehydrations. Or it can be nursed in a uh, incubator or an open care warmer system, which will be dealing in the later part of our discussions. And minimize stimulation. The baby should not be frequently handled, which gives a uh, why because this gives a minimal stimulation and handling it gives a very good neurodevelopmental outcome. So now, why hyperventilation and hyperoxia, as we earlier discussed, maintain a target of oxygen saturation between 88% and 93%. Obtain specimens for the blood count with the differential count, blood culture, blood glucose measurement. Give antibiotics as indicated give parents information about their babies. So these are the initial steps of a resuscitation of a, any preterm who is born less than 34, uh, 34 weeks, this is the 34 weeks or less than 37 weeks of gestation. Let's go on to the so specific problems, major problems encountered by the preterms in their NICU stay. First and foremost thing will be hypothermia. Why? Because the babies will be having a low brown adipose tissues which are usually located in the nape of the neck, uh, interscapular region and then above the uh, renal, renal kidneys. So what are the function of these adipose tissues? There is a stimulus from the ventromedial thala thalamus nucleus which gives a stimulus to this uh, brown adipose tissues where, where, where it uh, releases the norepinephrine. Norepinephrine helps in oxidation of these fatty acids whereby energy is produced and metabolism continues. This is called a non-shivering thermogenesis. The protein or involved in the non-shivering thermogenesis is called thermogenin. So as the gestation uh, lowers, say for a 24 or 25 or 26 week gestation, there will be very few adipose tissues which will uh, be very, uh, the, these babies will be very poor in generating the Heat. Next is the low white adipose tissues, low fat, which we see commonly seen below the dermis, which uh, helps in, which acts as an insulator in preventing the heat loss from the body. So these preterm babies will be having a low white fat adipose tissues, uh, having a loss of insulation effect and reduced hormones involved in thermogenesis, uh, triiodothyronine norepinephrine, cortisol, because of uh, immaturity, these hormones will not be sufficient enough to uh, play in the stressful activities. And large body surface area, when compared to the adults or a term baby, 
there will be more heat loss. When the large surface, there will be more heat loss. All these parameters uh, play a role in uh, uh, destabilizing the baby's temperature. So what is hypothermia? Any temperature less than 36.5 degrees centigrade is called a hypothermia. Again, hypothermia is divided into three types. One is a cold stress, moderate hypothermia, and severe hypothermia. Cold stress or more mild hypothermia, the temperature usually between 36 and 36.4 degree. Moderate is between 32 and 35.9. And severe hypothermia, temperature below 32 degrees Celsius. There is an entity called thermoneutral environment. What does it mean? It is an ambient temperature necessary for the normal metabolism to occurs. So this is the this is a very essential. We will be trying to maintaining a thermoneutral zone where the normal metabolism of the body is at. When the metabolism is over or metabolism is subnormal, we expect a, a downfall of the uh, clinical course in the preterm. So what is this normal uh, thermoneutral environment? For a term baby, it will be around 34 to 36 degrees centigrade. Whereas for preterm, those below less than 34 weeks, it will be around 36 to 37 degrees centigrade, where the normal metabolism can occur. Can anyone tell what is a normal thermoneutral zone for uh, adults? Anyone? Anybody there? I can see only two people. What about the others? Sir, everyone is uh, switching on their cameras. Pardon? Be louder. Sir, everyone has turned on their cameras. Everyone has turned on, turned on the camera. No, I, I don't see much people. Okay, fine. Anyone of you can answer? It will be around 25 to 27 degrees centigrade for the adult. So how this uh, thermonia, how this uh, uh, hypothermia is prevented? We see this. So the first picture is a baby wrapped in a plastic sheet. Plastic sheet. It prevents the heat loss by evaporation. Okay, and the baby is nursed in this position. The disadvantage with this is we may not be able to uh, have an adequate uh, uh, handling of the babies. Uh, when the baby suddenly collapses, we need to give a have an IV access or an umbilical vein catheterization to be difficult. So it will, you will not be able to do it very fast. So we have to remove this and it will take a time. So that is one disadvantage with this. Next is a radiant warmer. It's an open cap system where you have a uh, the top part where we have a, uh, a bulbs will be there. It will be producing the heat, generating the heat that will be transmitted to the baby. The minimum temp, uh, distance that has to be kept between the baby and this uh, the bulb where the heat is produced is at least 45 centimeters. Okay, fine. You have a problem. If you, if you notice, you will, be, you will be seeing a wire, a blue color wire that will be coming from the warmer and it will be placed on the abdomen, uh, infant's abdomen. That is called a skin probe, which will monitor the temperature and give a feedback to the warmer. The, we can set a temperature in the warmer, uh, say for 36, 37 degrees centigrade, we can set it. The babies in hypothermia or the hypothermia, the, the radiant warmer will try to either reduce the heat production or increase the heat production depending upon the sensing the temperature from the baby's abdomen. So the disadvantage with this system is uh, temperature regulation is sometimes the baby will be, uh, um, sometimes, sometimes the baby will be uh, moved. Um, uh, from that place during nursing, the probe may be get displaced from the uh, where it is uh, pasted on the abdomen. So the baby, the warmer will sense that the baby is having a hypothermia. Lower temperature will be directed. The warmer will be trying to produce more heat. The baby may go a uh, hyperthermia. That is the one disadvantage with the uh, this system. The third one is the uh, incubator. Uh, so that the the baby's temperature is also controlled. Uh, using the same probe similar to the warmer system and the bassinet that is uh, the glass bassinet that is surrounding the baby the environment you can control the humidified air around the uh, air around the baby's uh, environment so you can have a control over the surrounding where you can prevent the heat loss by a conduction or a radiation also fine the third thing is the kangaroo mother care uh, it's a skin to skin contact um, uh, 
uh, it is the best method of uh, maintaining the baby's body, uh, baby's uh, temperature the kangaroo mother cares in um, uh, usually advised for the babies who are more than 1600 uh, grams who are stable doesn't have any inotropic support or doesn't have any uh, does not on any support so those babies will be uh, on the kangaroo mother care now there is an entity called intermittent kmc for sick preterms those on ventilators also so now they are advising in the western countries or developed countries where the father or a mother will be allowed to place the baby on their back chest even when the baby is on the ventilators or a inotropic support for a short durations whereas for the normal uh, well thriving baby who has who is out of any acute sickness or condition more than 1600 uh, grams these babies will be placed on the bare mothers uh, or a father or any relative who is able to give a kangaroo mother care it has to be provided continuously for 2 hours minimum at least for 10 to 12 hours per day it can be gradually increase up to 10 to uh, sorry gradually increase up to 22 to 24 hours per day how long this kangaroo mother care has to be given it has to be given till two baby reaches the 2.5 uh, kg So, what are the advantages of this kangaroo mother care? It helps in bonding between the parent and the baby, uh, better sleep pattern in the uh, babies, and reduces the apneic episodes in the baby, and ensures the adequate breastfeeding in the babies. So, these are the advantages of the kangaroo mother care. Next, we go on to the respiratory system. So, the respiratory system, uh, we have uh, acute manifestations and uh, late uh, long-term complications. acute manifestations in the uh, nic what you expect respiratory distress syndrome bpd is bronchopulmonary dysplasia apnea of prematurity and air leaks such as pneumothorax pneumomediastinum uh, all these things are called air leaks and the long term complications are cle that is called chronic lung disease and reactive airway disease like asthmatic bronchitis wheezing and all the baby can the Uh, infant can have in the later part of their life so what is more concerned about our uh, uh, preterms the respiratory distress syndrome what is this respiratory distress syndrome anyone what is otherwise called as hyaline membrane disease sir very good why it is called hyaline membrane okay we will discuss it the central feature of the respiratory distress uh, syndrome is a uh, surfactant deficiency second into the premature delivery what is the surfactant surfactant is a, a possible liquid secreted by the type 2 pneumocytes so we have a type 1 and type 2 cells in the alveoli so this surfactant is produced by the type 2 pneumo, uh, pneumocytes usually starts producing by the 20 weeks of gestation we can detect a uh, possible liquid this surfactant in the amniotic fluid by 26 weeks of gestation and usually this production maturation completes by 34 weeks of gestation so logically when you see any babies born less than 34 weeks of gestation will be having a relative deficiency of these surfactants what is the function of these surfactants it helps in maintaining the surface tension of the alveoli what is the surface tension what do you mean by surface tension anyone to prevent from collapsing how so in the respiration you have the both inspiration and the expiration uh, during inspiration we we'll, uh, create a positive pressure where the alveolus will air is smaller airways and alveolus will open during expiration because of the collapse of the lung and the pressure from the thoracic cage the alveolus gets collapsed it has to be get ready for the next inspiration so this surfactant acts here it prevents it forms a layer on the alveoli that by preventing it uh, from getting attached permanently so it has to be helps in opening up the airways for the next breathing the next cycle of the breathing direct acts so whenever whenever there is a surfactant deficiency this opening will not happen there will be a continuous collapse of the alveoli occurs so this is the pathophysiology surfactant deficient alveoli the alveoli gets collapsed results in the generalized atelectasis of the whole lung so part of some of the alveoli will be having some surfactant most of the alveoli will not be having it so this is better when some alveoli will having a good ventilation and perfusion some will not be having a perfusion ventilation at all so there will be a ventilation perfusion which was, which will uh, lead to the hypoxemia and the respiratory acidosis 
because of this uh, the baby will be trying to maintain the alveoli open by uh, uh, ever heard of grunting what do you mean by grunting have you seen any baby grunt increase the effort to breathe sir so what is that yeah you are partially correct what is that how how the effort how the baby will put an effort increase it will make noises very good you see a uh, grunting is a moaning sound or a, uh, a sound made during the phase of expiration when you see the inspiration and come expiration during the phase of expiration the baby will try to make some moaning sound that is called a grunting why it is making such a noise why it will try during expiration the uh, what, what will happen at the end of expiration the vocal cords will close try to close it's a vision or it will try to close it at the end of expiration um, so during grunting what will happen it will be the baby will be starting closing the vocal cord before the uh, during the early phase of the expiration thereby it creates a pressure whenever there is a when, when you are trying to force an air out through a tube imagine you are trying to force an air out through a tube and you are trying to close the upper end of the tube you will be generating a pressure back pressure which will try to keep the alveoli open so this is called a grunting so baby will try to maintain this mechanism baby continuously having a grunting try to maintain have this way. this repetitive stress on the collapsed alveoli and bronchioles will cause a damage to the alveoli because it's a shear stress so it will be a there will be some injury and the proteinaceous material will be leaking from the alveolar lining which causes the hyaline membrane disease once the hyaline uh, gets deposit you will have again secondary surfactant deficiency which ultimately leads to respiratory failure and death so what are the clinical features of this respiratory distress syndrome on the tachypnea the baby will try air anger will be having a respiratory rate more than 60 per minute uh, because of hypoxemia and grunting increased to work of breathing the accessory muscles will be put into work nasal flaring retraction of the accessory muscles sinuses will be there pallor lethargy distress in feeding and apnea these are the clinical features of the uh, respiratory distress syndrome so how do you diagnose it one is a clinical feature any preterm babies born less than 34 weeks of gestation having a respiratory distress your first diagnosis will be respiratory distress syndrome or a hyaline membrane disease so we take an x-ray immediately we take an x-ray we can see the um, spaces uh, normally uh, normally we don't see uh, lungs will be a uh, loose higher there will be a lucency in the lung fields where here you see it will be white white patches it's called a ground glass Opac uh, opacity, ground glass opacities, or a any compactance. So because of collapsed alveoli, because of collapsed alveoli, you don't see the air in the alveoli. So all these things will be appearing white. Okay. Another thing is you will see the air bronchogram. What is this air bronchogram? Only in air bronchogram. This is the air bronchogram. You see the divergence, di divergences. Able to appreciate? Yes. Oh yeah, fine. So this is called the air bronchogram. This is a larger airways. This uh, respiratory distress syndrome is a pathology of the alveoli and smaller airways. Where the larger airways, you will having a air. so behind this uh, op opacified uh, lung fields, these airways will be visible. This is called air bronchogram. Uh, this is a quite ventilated child, so you will be having whenever the atelectasis, you have a small lung volume. How to calculate the lung volume? You count the Rib spaces here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rib spaces are there. Normally, five to seven rib spaces will be there in the any preterm babies. Less than five rib spaces, you take it as a low lung volume. More than eight rib spaces, you take it as a hyperinflation. This baby probably would have been ventilated so that you have a lung volume is normal for this child. In RDS, you have a low lung volume, air bronchogram, and this atelectasis, honeycomb, or a uh, opacity is called uh, features of the hyaline membrane disease so what is the treatment so you receive the baby under the warmer as earlier i mentioned it hello sir